Oh, this one makes me feel flowers in the sky floating. Horses going by. Okay. Oh, this one reminds me of the beach. song I just wrote called Red Ball. Um, let me know in the comments if, if you like it. Like it's, it's got a good, it's got a good kick to it. It's got a good beat, you know? All right. It's Friday. Recording day. My name is Janine. Welcome back to my channel. This is Frank and Frog Fiber Podcast. And I'm coming to you from Toronto. I have two babies. One is turning two tomorrow. Happy birthday to ya. I mean today. What? He's turning two today. Like, these, we got balloons. It's today. What am I talking about? My birthday's next Wednesday. I'm not turning two. Nope. So, I uh, got some birthdays. Um, I have another baby who's seven. That's a giant baby. Um, what else about me? I like to knit. I like to crochet. I don't know how to spin yet, but I want to learn. I don't know how to sew either. Another one on the list. Um, if you like this podcast, you can do things like like it with your finger on a button. <laughs> or you could subscribe. Then you get notifications. Maybe. I think you have to press the ringy dingy thing to get the notifications. But you can do those things. If you like the podcast, go ahead and do them right now. Or not, whatever you feel like. I got some new yarn. I'm so, so excited about this. All right, so I uh, did an interview with Bistitual that you're gonna see on the next episode. Um, they are a local yarn store in Toronto. And I saw this yarn on that, or, or sorry, during that interview. And it is called Hempton, Hemp for Knitting, Superior Quality Fibers. Also, reading is uh, one of my life skills. 40% um, cotton, 30% hemp, 30% modal. Made in Italy. So this stuff is absolutely beautiful. I got eight balls of it. I am actually gonna make some shorts. I'm gonna make the Jessie May So Summer shorts. They are very adorable. Um, I, I love the Flutterbutt shorts as well. I think they're called Flutterbutt. Yeah, the ones with like a frill. Um, but I thought these are like very wearable, you know? So, and then uh, I also have uh, the outline tank pattern already. So I'm gonna make one of those as well. So it's like a set for summer. Apparently, I am allowed to participate in Hot Girl Summer. I, I, just, I just found that, like anyone can. Anyone can. Not just Megan the Stallion. I'm really excited. I hope everyone has their soft pants on. Yeah, 
I, I had to graduate because it's like, it's very hot like fire outside now. It's basically, I feel like it's like 30 degrees uh, Celsius, which we have in Canada. Um, so I'm wearing like some new soft pants. They almost look like a diaper, but they're shorts. Uh, I know they look like they're made of de denim. Please don't judge me. I feel like they're like chambray denim, so still soft. Um, what else did I get new? I also got a Fibromancy pro uh, project bag. Wow. I am stumble shanks over all my words today. Bit of a struggle bus. So here is my new Fibromancy bag. Porgs! <laughs> I got it from Bystitual. And uh, the bags are amazing um, because you can see they have a drawstring here. They have a little strap to uh, just sling over your, your wrist while you're knitting your socks or your hat at the park while you're watching your baby play in the sandbox. That's how I like to do it. And the yarn inside here, I'm going to be using to make one of the finished, <laughs> I already finished one of what I'm gonna make with this, um, but, uh, I'm going to be making the new Andrea Mowry hat, which I'll show you in a second, with these colors as a jumping off point. I mean, what do you think? That's the end of my poppy after I made um, a project with the poppy as well. So that bag is beautiful. I love it. It's beautiful how you can kind of see the yarn right through it, right? Um, and then I ordered some yarn as well. Very excited about this. Um, there is a new shawl out by Inez Sang and it's called Stars in Our Hands. And I just wanna prepare you before you go look at this. I mean, you're gonna, you can, well, I'm gonna put up a picture right now. Um, get ready. One, two, three. It is spectacular. It is an incredibly beautiful shawl. Um, I know it's a partnership with Le Bien Aimé and there are some kits up on Le Bien Aimé or, uh, website, but I already have some leftover, um, merino, not merino, mohair. <laughs> Somebody yell me. I have some leftover mohair. So I am going to, yeah, just use my leftover mohair. And then I ordered a couple skeins of yarn to make that project with. Uh, that's all you need, two regular skeins and then um, some mini skeins of mohair. That's what uh, it calls for. Um, I'm waiting on my unicorn yarn as well. Very excited. But uh, I got a notification it's gonna be delivered next week, two days before my birthday. So I think it said it's arriving Monday. Um, and it's just a reminder that Be a Freaking Unicorn, the beautiful initiative where uh, some of the proceeds go towards LGBTQIA plus charities. This is still going on until May 24th. So you have like a day to order some unicorn yarn if you didn't yet, please. It's so beautiful. Uh, the initiative is beautiful. The yarn is beautiful. It's a it's a win-win situation for everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm waiting on that. Really excited to get that. And I'll definitely be able to show you next time uh, that beautiful yarn from The Loving Path. That's my unicorn yarn. Mm, what did I finish? I did finish a couple things, yeah. So like I said, I made the Andrea Mowry hat, the one she just released called Flicker and Flame. I didn't even block it yet. Please don't judge me. Um, but I think that this scrappy Flicker and Flame turned out pretty nicely. And I want to say that the way that I just took two pieces of fingering yarn and marled them, I think has a very similar effect to spin cycle. What are we saying? because actually this is two different colors of purple down here. And this is two different colors of purple with one of the same colors and then a new color, and then the same color and a new color. And then I had to add like one more color at the very top. Um, but it was always two like shades mixed together. And then the base yarn was my, some of my left leftover hedgehog fibers from making the Le Pouf cardigan I just made for my friend. So, it's just a whole bunch of leftovers and has a really nice effect, I think. Uh, the purples I used are by Stitch Together Studio from 
an advent calendar that just keeps giving. I just keep using the scraps from it and making more and more projects with little bits of it. You saw my baby Yoda that I used uh, this, this to make um, last week, two weeks ago. What is time? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's one of my FOs. I don't know if I need to block it. Let's see what it looks like on. Are you ready? Ready for some modeling? Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> what do we think? And look at this. Look at this like star situation. It's really cool. So cute. So I made that as well. I made, okay. So this is one of my points of shame. One of my many points of shame. <laughs> I bought yarn and I didn't have a project in mind, but I bought four skeins of it and I thought, that's enough to make a sweater, right? Uh, no. So <laughs> I bought this beautiful Akara yarns fiber. Um, uh, it's the chunky superwash. And remember I was gonna make a wave of change? Yeah, no. I had enough to make this made up cardigan for my two year old. Actually, it'll fit him in the winter. It's like I made it a two and two, three year old size. Um, and here's, here's the bottom. I just did like some garter stitch at the bottom, but look at the beautiful color. Oh, it's absolutely spectacular. Um, and, so this is what I made and this is what's left. Okay. I thought I could make an adult wave of change. What is wrong with me? <laughs> so yeah, this is what, this is what we've got now. <laughs> But I just need some buttons for it. You can see I did the buttonholes here. Um, I like lots of buttonholes. How do you feel about it? I, I think lots of buttonholes because then it doesn't kind of like tug like that. I also did the tops like a bit of an angle and they're they're little knobblies because, you know, because uh, it was like knitting on one side or knitting on both sides, you know what I mean? Pearl wedges. So yeah, I finished that. I think it's pretty cute. It's gonna be perfect for, you know, you're not supposed to put their winter coat on them in the car seat. So a chunky sweater like this, I think is awesome for the winter because it's uh, not as bulky as the coat. And just stick that on them when you're sticking them in the car every day, done. I also finished a pair of socks for my seven-year-old daughter and I don't have them. Uh, even though it's 30 degrees, she has taken the socks. She has worn the socks mm, pretty much every day. <laughs> I can't have them. Uh, so I'm gonna put up a picture here. I ended up making socks out of the one skein of Poppy Hedgehog Fibers yarn that I had. Um, <laughs> against the wishes of my, <laughs> of my knitting friends. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, how that skein knitted up was so spectacular. Uh, you'll be able to see in the photos there. And then uh, Evelyn uh, did some light uh, foot modeling slash dancing slash whatever she felt like doing. <laughs> so I'll show you that as well. And I let her choose the heel color from a whole bunch of those leftovers that I have from that advent calendar. I'm telling you, get one advent calendar, make a hundred projects from it. Um, so those were a giant success. Um, she won't be able to wear them for much longer, um, cause summer, but she loved them. She loves them. She's probably wearing them right now. Maybe on her hands. I don't know. What did I finish? Wait, no, I already did that part. What am I knitting? Okay. Oh yeah. Here's another new thing I got. I got my Lola Bean Yarn Company t-shirt. Um, we need to be uncomfortable until things are comfortable for everyone. And um, Adela from Lola Bean has so many amazing things to say and is really open with a lot of the ups and downs of being an independent dyer. And wow. I mean, if you don't follow her on social media, I would hop to it just because I feel like that insight into what um, small dye companies go through and like experience with pre-orders and shipping and less than kind 
communications from customers. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, it's really important that somebody is like being really upfront with that. Um, so I really love that about Adela. I will show you what I've been working on. First of all, um, my friend Ariane that I'm making uh, this sweater for, remember she started the yoke of the Batignol, Batignol sweater. Uh, I think I got it right the second time. She has finished the dress she's making for me. I forget what it is. It's Patton's something, but uh, yeah, I'll show you um, on the next episode. I'll, I'll, I'll have it on or something, but here's the part that she did. And then I have been working on it and I'm at the bottom ribbing now. Yay. Um, hold it a little bit closer so you can kind of see. Um, so that's steaked. It's a steak down the middle. Here's the back of it. Just to kind of see. Pretty cool, eh? Well, I mean, what are you saying? I think it's pretty cute. And I've um, made it a little cropped as per her request. She gave me the measurement from under the arm to where she wanted it to stop. And so um, the hem is like, 2.5 inches so I think it's gonna be absolutely perfect for how she wants it to fit super excited this is super exciting to work on love working on it and I picked these up like twice I feel like in between uh the last time we saw each other so uh <laughs> I'm sorry they're not more done I'm sorry but um <laughs> this is the Timberline cardigan sleeves uh, this is the main cable that runs down the top of the arm and then there's all these other uh, cables and you can see the part the garter part is where you do the sleeve increases so it's kind of genius like that um, let me just let me just give you a thrill this is oh, oh yes what that is some arm modeling <laughs> wait yes okay you have to model with your elbows together. What? Are you jealous of the lucky man that gets to wear these? Don't worry, I can put them on because I have two cables attached together. That's why it's safe. It's safe, everybody. I know you're worried about my magic loop being pulled, but they're okay. So that's, that's all she wrote for what's going on with me. Now, I am so excited for you to see this interview. Um, I did an interview with Spin Me a Yarn Store, which is a yarn store that's very, it's the closest yarn store to me in Toronto. Um, and Trina Evans, who owns the store, is just lovely in literally every way. <laughs> so I'm so excited for the, for you to see this interview and I really hope you enjoy it uh, as much as we enjoyed doing it. Yay! Here's Trina from Spin Me a Yarn. All right, we are recording. Yay! <laughs> okay, I want to say a big welcome and hello to Trina Evans from Spin Me a Yarn, right down on the lakeshore in Etobicoke. Hi, Trina. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. I don't know if you do this, but before I go to like be online on a camera i do like find one last final little check i see that you are a very high level of glam today um <laughs> so i know you do this too i i usually yeah usually usually I, I try and put lipstick on i didn't today but um I've, I've glammed up with my knitting i you inspired me with your first podcast and i've triple layered on my knitting i've got my i've got my um uh, sugar maple tea I've got my throw over cardigan and I've got my blooming lilac shawl so I've got a bit of everything happening today all the knits all, all the knits, the knits. so the knits. we are wearing all of our knits well this is my I think it's called the Benton it's it's a Brooklyn tweed pattern um but we are in our knits we are ready to go uh, I have some questions for you as someone who I really admire, who I feel uh, really gets the yarn community going in a lot of fantastic ways. Uh, Spin Me a Yarn is a beautiful store, just a few years old, three and a half years old. Uh, can you tell us a bit of the journey you took uh, to become the yarn peddling maven you are now? <laughs> 
yarn peddling. I've been called worse. I've uh, yeah, I've been called a pusher, and I've been, yes, I, all kinds of things. Um, this, this this journey started actually more than twenty years ago. I was it was one of those things where you have random thoughts, and I've always loved knitting. And I had a random thought one day as to if I owned a yarn store, what would it be called? And that's I got to spin me a yarn, and that again shelved that idea for a few years. And then when Chapters and in Indigo opened, and they had the bookstore with a coffee shop inside, I was like, hmm, it'd be really great to have a yarn store with a coffee shop inside because then people could mix and mingle and so that that idea sort of germinated um and then in the end what I did was uh, decide that everywhere all my friends I've talked to knit over the years there was never a great place to gather to knit and to have that community they're either apartments too small I have pets they were allergic so it, it sort of all started to add up and it was always a retirement maybe when I retire maybe when I retire and then I have a wonderful husband named Bob who said why don't you do it now get it up get it started while we can and that way when you retire you've got a business and it's going and so that's how it all sort of fell into place and we started doing meetups uh, down just right, right next door the big guy's little coffee shop we did that for a couple of years. That was my uh, way of seeing if there was a community of crafters. And there is. It's a great community in the neighborhood. And we were really fortunate that the store beside the big guys became available. And it was just fortuitous since then. September 2017, we opened and everything has been serendipitous since then. So we're very excited to be right beside the big guys. People can grab a coffee, come here, be social when we can pre-COVID. Um, and we love the, the sitting area in the back where people can meet and gather and share ideas. And so it's been a really great journey so far. Well, it is a fantastic store. And I heard that you had a kind of semi-celebrity as your first ever customer. <laughs> we did. We did. A celebrity who's going to go far, I'm sure. Yes, that, that was, uh, it always makes me smile when, uh, whenever you come in the store. The day we opened, and I'm all nervous, we had, we have to show you the shelves. The day we opened, we had 10 balls of wool on each shelf. That was it. Like the same color. <laughs> And each shelf just had a little stack and there would be 10 here. And then I had bought, where am I finding here? I bought some store decor to fill in some of the shelves because there wasn't even wool for all the shelves. So we had little store decor that's still still are with us, but not on the shelves anymore. Um, and the day we opened, you waltzed right in and you came and walked right to the back of the stores, sat down, you had workout gear on, you pulled out your knitting. I always remember you were making something with hedgehog um, fibers. And so because hedgehog was a, was a brand I've always, yeah, I know you love it. And so, uh, yeah, you just sat down and started chatting away to us. And then slowly people started coming and trickling in to see what was new. Imagine three and a half years later, we still have people coming saying, oh, have you just opened? How long have you been here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You know, it takes a few years to get established uh, in Toronto as a store. Uh, but you've definitely got a stronghold now. You've got a whole group of dedicated crafters. Speaking of community... There are quite a few ways that you foster this community and you really keep the, the knitters and crocheters and fiber artists connected in a lot of great ways. Uh, what are some of those things that you provide for the community? Well, as well as our social space, which unfortunately right now has become our shipping area because of COVID, um, we love doing socials that are arranged on a Thursday and Sunday, but we also, the, the space is open whenever the store is open and people can come in to enjoy meeting friends here, again, grabbing a coffee from next door, sitting, crafting. Sometimes our socials on a Sunday that start at 10.30 and are meant to finish at 12, actually at five o'clock when we're closing, we have to kick people out sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But the other thing that we, we love doing, again, as you say, knitting isn't just about the yarn and the needles. It's about the community. It's about doing things together, supporting tons of charity knits. We've done knitted knockers. We've done um, twiddle muffs for Alzheimer's. Uh, we've also yarn bombed the lamppost outside. And we have this beautiful bouquet of, of um, hand knitted and crocheted. I'm not sure if I can spin my camera around here. It's a very wet day out there, but the lamppost is a lovely bouquet of, of knitting and crochet. And so that certainly makes the neighborhood uh, a little bit brighter, especially on these rainy days. And, and also through COVID, because we're not able to gather and because we're not able to share, we've, we've had beer tastings, we've done uh, bingo nights, movie nights. Um, so we started doing webinars. So we've been hosting a, a Wednesday webinar series and we've had and not just about knitting, because again, it's about the community. It's not just about the wool. We've done virtual trunk shows and we've had designers of uh, shawl designers come and speak. And we did uh, a lady from Winnipeg who has her own homestead that came and spoke with us, which was amazing. Um, a long way homestead. So all of that yarn related has been great.
great, but we've also had someone talk about taxes. We had someone do a cooking lesson. Uh, we talked about divine destinations and, and getting away in a time you can't. And they were able to show some great videos of some of their trips. So really for me, it is about the community. And it's, it again, can't stress how much a great community we have here of crafters. Yes, I for one have depended on it uh, <laughs> throughout the pandemic. You know, it's really keeping all of us crafters going to have a, a place uh, that feels like home. Um, so you have some spectacular summer yarns in stock. What, what, could we get a little mini tour, maybe some project ideas? Absolutely. That's a great plan. We've been really stocking up because we're hoping once summer rolls around, we can actually get together again. We have done park group meetings as well during COVID. We even brought their own chairs. Um, so for this year, for the summer, we're, we're focusing a lot on the Juniper Moon uh, yarns. They've come out with, in addition to Zooey, which I know you're a fan of, um, which is a cotton linen blend. They've come out with a new one this year called Summer Solstice. So it's the same Zooey blend, but with also a uh, tweed as well. So there's some nice tweeds. If I can sort of go in a bit closer here, you'll see the tweed on those yarns and a great range of colors. And then we've got um, another product from Juniper Moon is Pollock which is a silk blend that they've got a silk and linen blend in nice light colors. And then we've got some Kobasi, which is a uh, cotton, bamboo and silk. So again, looking at things that are not necessarily wool related, our bamboo pop is terrifically popular. Lots of fun, bright colors for summer. It's a 50-50 cotton bamboo blend and it knits up beautifully. I've got a sample here. And there's also this amazing shawl by Cheryl Faust called Meet Me at Midnight which is a mosaic made out of the bamboo pop. And then this terrific Katia concept, which is a cotton cashmere, 10% cashmere and the rest is 90% cotton. So again, really great for summer knits. And up here we've got mimosa, which is light variegated options. So those are just a few that have been coming in and we're definitely going to be getting a few more in as uh, we're hitting into spring and summer soon. And one of the things that we do like to do at the store as well is always try and get samples as quick as we can so that people are able to see what it looks like when it's knitted up. We don't have samples of everything, but for the most part, we do knit alongs. Um, and then this is a sample of the Pollock, just to be able to show you how great it looks as a summer top. So really nice and light. And um, the Pollock is the silk linen blend. Wow, those colors. Yeah, it gives people an opportunity to touch it, see it, feel it when they can come in the store, which hopefully, hopefully there'll be good news at the end of May. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Small businesses uh, need us to get in there in the near future. Yeah. And uh, what is the next thing that you are inspired to make yourself? Ah, Thank you for asking. I'm actually going to be making something out of the summer solstice. There's a, a great long sleeved pattern by Annex Strick called Holly. And it's got some really interesting, I like sweaters and things with interesting um, stitch definitions and stitch details. And this one's got eyelets for the increases. So on both sides for the a raglan, it'll be eyelets, but then she has them run down the sides and also down the arms. So I thought it'd be nice for, because quite often in the summer, even though we like the short sleeve tees, you'll get air conditioning. So if you're indoors, you'll still need something over your shoulders or long sleeved. So I'm going to be making myself a long sleeved summer sweater next. What's off my needles was a test knit that I did for Grey Owl Knits. And I just love this. It's called Dancing Dragonflies. And this is the hat that I did the test knit for. And she just released it a week ago. And now she's actually doing a um, headband as well. So I would just cast that off yesterday was a test knit for the headband. So I love doing test knits where I can. I love being able to um, help out other people, help out other designers to see if they need uh, either promoting their ideas. We've got a local Michael who works with us, uh, has his own hat and cowl and a few other patterns on Ravelry. So we've done a knit along with his stuff as well. So always something on the needles, usually more than just one project, but you just hit me at a spot where I've got a lot of cast offs. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'm usually, you know, I'm usually monogamous, but this I whole, know, uh, I don't understand that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand this, that. This whole podcast thing has made me uh, kind of feel like I should get a couple things going, you know, to keep the excitement uh, going. So I, I will pull up the names of those two patterns that you, the one that you are inspired to make and that the dragonfly hat that you just showed uh, so that uh, okay. any viewers can find the links to that. Uh, but I want to say thank you so much for joining me. 
You're very welcome. But one more thing. I, one yes. more thing I'm going to share at the back of our store. You'll have to excuse us because, as I say, it's become a shipping area. But I think there's another area that perhaps those people watching who do live in Toronto might be interested in. But we also have our blocking station. And this blocking station has been very well used during COVID. Right now, we've got some great samples of this is called the Big Wave. And it's a really nice vest top made out of Roslyn. And then we've got the Rocket Tea that was a knit along that we did last summer that's off Rita's Needles. Susan's done this cutest, cutest little baby top. And over here, we have a baby blanket that Heather made. So quite often, there's, well, there's always, I've got a nice little pile here of more blocking. There's always something on the blocking table and um, people who don't, want to block themselves or who are nervous about blocking we're happy to do it and part of that community you were mentioning we ask all we ask for is a donation to LAMP which is a community centre one block north of here and it's a multi-use community centre so since we've been open we've I think we're about I think about a 750 800 dollars we've donated to LAMP just by people giving us five dollars for blocking here and there so it's another way we can give back. Wow, that is fantastic. I went to LAMP with both of my kids. Uh, oh, you did? When they, yeah, when they were little. Uh, so they, that's very close to my heart. I'm so happy to hear that. Terrific. Uh, yeah, so I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me and all the YouTube people, all the humans that might join us on the podcast. And uh, thank you for being fabulous and for always being so welcoming. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. That means an awful lot. So thank you. And good luck with this podcast. I look forward to following it and seeing how it grows over time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the interview that I did with Trina. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you. I start to salivate yarn. My whole body starts to shake. You say this yarn is merino, M-A-R-I-N. Oh, this yarn is merino, M-E-R-I-N. Oh, this yarn is merino, M-E-R-I-N. Oh, this yarn is merino, M-E-R-I-N.